Hi, my name is Kyle Courtney, and I'm very glad to be with you here today to talk about fair use. This is day two of building LLTDM. Imagine if all creators had to wait for a copyright work to be in the public domain before they used that work, or if scholars always had to seek permission to use or quote, and that permission could be denied with no recourse. Copyright law, however, gives us the flexibility to allow uses that are made during the copyright term and can be made without permission. One of the most famous of all the copyright limitations, the Copyright Act does just that, the doctrine of fair use. So let's look a little bit at fair use now. Under fair use, a person may use certain amounts of copyrighted material without permission from the copyright holder. The doctrine itself was rooted in both English and US case law, but was eventually codified as pictured here in the Copyright Act. As you can see, it sits right in the middle of the organized balance that exists in copyright law. It's squeezed right between the exclusive rights and the more specific exceptions. Fair use is for everyone. And since text and data mining often involves copying large amounts of copyrighted material in order to mine the content, it's very useful to the TDM researcher to know fair use because it involves access, copying, and processing works that could potentially be under copyright. Even if TDM researchers have authorized access to materials, copying a substantial part of those materials could infringe copyright in those works. And so might distribution after your copying and processing TDM project is over. If it is a fair use, however, it is not infringement. And again, imagine if you had to get permission to provide analysis, commentary, or criticism of somebody's copyrighted work. If there are no fair use, copyright holders could forbid you from using the work without permission, and this would vastly stifle free expression and scholarship. Fair use is a user's right that allows individuals to exercise one or more of the exclusive bundle of rights of the copyright owner without obtaining the permission from that copyright owner and without paying any licensing fee. So to decide whether use is fair, courts must consider at least four factors that are specifically mentioned in the Copyright Act. The first factor is the purpose and character of the use. Here courts ask whether the material has been transformed by adding new meaning or expression, or whether value was added by creating new information, new meaning or understanding. When a work is used for a different purpose than the original, which we'll talk about in a little bit, this factor will weigh heavily in favor of fair use. If it simply acts as a substitute for the original work, then it's less likely that that use is fair. Courts may also look to see whether the use of the material was for commercial or non-commercial purposes. But this uh, factor is rarely determinative of the total consideration of the case. The second factor looks at the nature of the copyrighted work. Here courts are looking at whether the copyrighted work was used in a creative or factual nature, say a creative song or a novel versus uh, a news item. The more factual the work, the more likely this factor will weigh in favor of fair use. On the flip side, the more creative the work, the more likely this factor is to weigh against fair use. Note that this factor has been slightly de-emphasized by courts over the last 20 years. The third factor is an important one, the amount and substantiality of the portion taken. Under this factor, courts look at how much of the work was taken, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Quantitatively, courts look at how much the original work was used. Did it use all the pages, the entire work of art, the entire song? Qualitatively, some courts have looked at whether the heart of the work is taken, maybe the essential part of the work, or the very reason why people want to engage and acquire the work. The more that's taken, both quantitatively and qualitatively, the less likely that use is to be fair. That said, copying a full work can absolutely be a fair use, depending on the circumstances. Finally, the fourth factor is the effect of the use on the potential market. The essential question courts ask here is whether this use will undermine the market or the potential market for the work that was copied. In accessing this factor, courts consider whether the use would hurt the market for the original work by displacing sales. Now there's a lot of more nuance to this factor, but I wanna move ahead to transformative fair use now. In 1841, the US had its first fair use case. And as case law developed, so did new and different fair use theories. One of the more interesting developments in fair use litigation was the emergence of transformative fair use. Use of any copyrighted materials is substantially more likely to pass fair use muster if the use is transformative. A work is transformative if, in the words of the Supreme Court, it adds something new, 
with a further purpose or different character, altering the first with new expression, meaning, or message. Transformative fair use is still a use without permission, but arguably it is the very life and breath of scholarship, research, and teaching. The last decade has seen a shift in court analysis of the fair use test in creative endeavors. In the transformative fair use, we see courts collapsing that four-factor test to ask the following questions. Does the new use transform the material by using it for a different purpose? And was the amount taken appropriate to that new transformative purpose? And more importantly, it helps that this new transformative use has that different purpose from the original item's purpose. For example, the purpose of the original fictional books in our use case was generally for entertainment. The new use should be for a different purpose, and arguably the new purpose would be ad commentary or analysis that reveals a new meaning or message, altering the original works with this new expression to derive that new meaning. And as a reminder, fair use is not just transformative, fair, or infringement. Fair use law is well equipped to be adaptable to the various scenarios. That's the purpose of fair use, flexibility. Fair use is not mechanically applied or even weighed equally. Courts take into account all the facts and circumstances of a specific case to decide if a copyright materials use is fair. And we as scholars, TDM researchers, lawyers, librarians, students, staff, and faculty can also use these fair use laws and decisions to make our own fair use risk calculus for our own scenarios. In the next section, we'll look to see how fair use is applied specifically in the text and data mining field.